Hello and welcome to Venn Diagrams for Propositions. Uh, we will see in this lecture that how Venn Diagrams are drawn for uh, you know, categorical propositions, right? Now, uh, let us start with universal propositions, right? We know A is a universal proposition which is represented as all S is P. So, uh, how it is drawn in Venn Diagrams? Now, Contrary to our um, normal or say our popular belief, uh, many mathematics uh, books have represented Euler and Venn diagrams as the same thing. But the history goes like uh, Euler gave his diagrams long time back, then criticized those diagrams. And since then criticized his diagrams and then drawn his own diagrams, people thought that Venn and Euler diagrams are basically the same, which is a big mistake. And this mistake was there till the end of the 20th century. In many of the textbooks also you will find and especially uh, uh, in uh, literature you will not find the distinction between those two. So uh, in the last lecture uh, what we drew uh, were basically uh, Euler diagrams. What we are drawing right now are Venn diagrams. However, to tell you the truth, uh, we will talk about Venn diagrams up to A and E. From I and O, you will see that they are not exactly Venn diagrams, but rather Venn pairs diagrams, which we will be also discussing. So I will put this hyphen here and put it as Venn pairs or pairs diagrams, which we will be discussing right now. Now all S is P. How to draw all S is P? Every Venn diagram is drawn as two intersecting circles where you can label them as S and P. And when I say all S is P, what I mean to say is that the part of S which is not there in P is empty. And to show the emptiness, he has basically shaded it. Right? I am putting lines here to save time. But actually, if you will see it in the books or in his own uh, paper uh, of 1880 as well as in 1881 symbolic logic, you will find that this part is shaded completely, right? So I have drawn the lines, but it is basically shaded completely, blacked out, right? And this blacking out or shading, for when shading means emptiness, right? So shading is equivalent to emptiness. This is the idea. So he will say that when we say all S is P, what we mean to say? We mean to say, that the part of S which is not there in P does not exist, right? So that is the idea or there is nothing over here, right? So this emptiness is represented with the help of shading. This is the idea. Now, similar if we take E, that is no S is P. No S is P. Now, how to draw no S is P? Again, as I told you that every Venn diagram is drawn by two intersecting circles. So we will draw two intersecting circles S and P and we will shade this part. This part is shaded because there is no common part, right? So no S is P says that the common part of S and P does not exist or there is nothing which is there in the common part of S and P. So that is the idea. So no S is P is like this and all S is P is like this. Here, if you see that it talks about that this part is empty and here it talks about that this part is not existing, right? So, <clears throat> whatever is there is here. That is the idea. That is how the Venn diagrams are drawn. Contrary to, as I told you, as per the normal belief or principles, usually in undergraduate, when you come from the school and you have studied some kind of set theory and some kind of uh, stuff, uh, in mathematics and so on, there is not much of distinction made between Euler diagrams and Venn diagram and uh, there is a lot of confusion among students regarding Venn diagrams, right? But for Venn diagrams, the categorical propositions, Venn diagrams, these are basically the categorical, uh, the Venn diagrams for categorical propositions. Now we will talk about I and O, but let me tell you a story. Venn was not very happy with the way Euler represented uh, um, the categorical propositions and therefore he wanted to bring out something more meaningful to it. The history and all these things are there but it's not there in your course and it's not going to be very important for you. When tried in a lot of way to represent this uh, I and O, he in fact gave a lot of ideas. One of them 
is uh, mm, he th there is a mm, letter uh, correspondence between Euler uh, between Ben and Pears as well, which is uh, uh, very well drafted by Moffati. And uh, there, Ben has suggested a lot of ways in which uh, I and O can be represented. But he wanted to, um, uh, you know, uh, he was not very happy with the representation of I and O propositions. He was not happy with the way they need to be represented. He was a little bit reluctant. But uh, still, he gave a lot of ideas. One of them, closely related to one of them, was picked by uh, Pierce. And therefore, this is Charles Sanders Pierce, right? Uh, C.S. Pierce and this is John Venn, right? Uh, Venn diagrams were given somewhere in 1890 and Charles Pierce, these diagrams came somewhere around 1833, right? So, I kind of thing, which is some SSP is represented again as this is the basic diagram, right? So, the basic diagram will remain the same and here we put a star mark. Right? You can also put a cross mark. Right? You can put a cross mark. This star mark was suggested by Venn in some of the correspondences with uh, pairs. But pairs eventually took it as a cross mark like this. Right? So this is how some SSP is represented which says that the common part of SMP is having an element. So as shading represents uh, emptiness. Similarly, this cross mark represents the existence of an element. Here we are non-committant about any kind of existing things. Whether something exists here or whether something exists here, whether something exists in this part, we are not sure. We do not know. We, we do not claim. But when we say some SSP, we do claim. Therefore, sometimes these particular propositions are also called as existential propositions. Right? So, particular propositions are also called existential propositions because they do go on to assert the existence of the subject class. Right? So, when we say some SSP, we draw the diagram in this fashion. We put the cross mark over here and we say that there is something which exists over here. At least one thing exists in the common part of SMP. Now, if we take the O kind of proposition, which is represented as some S is not P. Again, the basic Venn diagram will remain the same. We will draw two intersecting circles and we will put a cross mark here. Right? So, this is the understanding of some SSP. When we say that there is at least one element which is existing in the part of S which is not there in P. Here we say that there exists at least one element which uh, is there in the common part of SNP. Here the common part of SNP is empty. Here the part of the exclusive part of S is empty. So this is also a way of representing the Venn diagrams and they are um, I will say uh, in your book as well. You will find in most of the textbooks, whether you uh, uh, take Kopi or whether you take uh, Harley or whether you take any of the books, right? There are a lot of books these days uh, on internet and on uh, in the market. Most of them, most of them, if not all, because now since uh, uh, people have come with a lot of research in the last 20 years and uh, therefore uh, it is known now that uh, these are not exactly Venn diagrams but Venn pairs diagrams. So a lot of uh, books have uh, tried to change. But mostly you will find that these are called as Venn diagrams. Popularly they are known as Venn diagrams but actually they are Venn pairs diagrams. And this is basically Pierce contribution, right? This is Pierce contribution and these are basically Venn's contribution, right? So this is the idea of uh, Venn pairs diagrams. These are basically the diagrams. And when we will be uh, going to the next step, where we will be discussing syllogisms, we will be discussing a lot of things. We will be also testing the validity of syllogisms. So we will be using the Venn pairs diagram, uh, diagrammatic technique to test the validity of syllogisms. So this was all about categorical propositions. I took around three lectures to give you very briefly the idea about categorical propositions. We will take the exercises in the class.